In Dragonflight, I challenged myself to see how much I could complete of the main campaign and Loremaster side quests without using flying. I even made a video chronicling my adventures and reminiscing on the development of travel throughout the mini expansions. At the end of the video, I wondered if I could do the same sort of challenge in The War Within. Well, The War Within released, and I decided to take on the challenge. This is the video on how it went. The rules I made for myself are simple. I'm only going to do the main leveling campaign and the Sojourner achievements. No flying unless by flight path, or specifically given a mount by a quest. The idea is to mimic the start of previous expansions that didn't allow you to fly immediately. Toys and goblin gliders are allowed. Since this is a new expansion, and I do actually want to do new content, once I've completed the Sojourner achievement of a zone, I am allowing myself to fly in that zone. In my last video, I did the challenge on my Demon Hunter for the parkour abilities, but since I wanted to level my main first, and technically my main is my druid, I decided to do this challenge on my druid instead. This will likely make things a bit trickier due to the lack of glide, fell rush, and vengeance leaps, but druids still have a few tricks to rely on when it comes to getting around tough terrain. Since this expansion is only a few weeks old, I had hoped to get this video out a bit sooner, but procrastination strikes again, I'm going to keep spoilers to a minimum, which means I will be hiding as much of the story as possible, including side quests. I think The War Within is a cool expansion that you should check out and enjoy in person, and not vicariously through YouTube. That being said, there will likely be some unavoidable spoilers, so if you haven't played it yet and were planning to, beware. The expansion starts out like many others, with a trip to Dalaran. After a bit of preparation, the city is teleported to the new expansion zone. And then some things happen which I'm not going to show. Okay, now the challenge officially begins. After killing a lot of Nerubians, I get saved by a bunch of angry earth and riding storm rooks. After a bit of cajoling, the lead earthen decides to allow us into their city. He's even nice enough to give me an NPC storm rook to ride so I don't have to run all the way there. The main city of Dornigal is pretty big and was clearly made of your ability to fly fast in mind, but it's actually very navigable on foot. Turns out the cooldown on consumable sun-worn sand is bugged. Great. What's this? A big-ass tall tower for me to glide off of? Don't mind if I do. The starting zone of the Isle of Dorne is actually a very flat zone, which makes the first leg of my no-flight challenge very easy. In past expansions, I would usually complete all the quests in a zone before moving on to the next, but this time I decided to do things differently, and after doing some side quests and getting a single glyph, I rushed the main campaign and left the rest of the side quests for later. Only thing of note for the main campaign in the zone is that they make you do a dungeon, but they give you a storm mark to cross the gap, and then the rest of the dungeon is indoors. Near the end of the Isle of Dorne campaign, you gotta set up some fuses, but they give you handy ladders to get to the top, so no flying required. With the main quest on the Isle of Dorne done, it was time to move on to the Ringing Depths. The Ringing Depths is an underground zone, and getting to it was actually quite simple. Just jump down the big hole. I do have to wonder what all the other players thought, seeing a random deer running around while they zoom by on their flying mounts. The Ring Depths is much more rugged than the Isle of Dorne, with lots of steep slopes and crevasses, but there's plenty of ramps and bridges around to allow me to climb back up to higher levels, so I never felt stuck. The Warrens had one quest where I had to fly around and throw out pamphlets. I thought this might be the first instance of forced flying, but it turns out you simply need to be on a flying mount or in flight form to start throwing them out, and you can remain on the ground until the quest is completed. It doesn't count as flying if I'm not actually flying, right? After having a fun time clambering around the little kobold village, I headed south. The main road is well maintained and very easy to run along, although I often left it to grab herbs. One thing I noticed is just how large and open these zones are compared to the past zones. They are definitely made of flying in mind, even if they still left roads, ramps, and bridges in place for ground travel. This can especially be felt in areas like Taylock and Taylock Mine, which are much larger questing areas than in past expansions. I eventually arrived at the Earthen Works, which gave me heavy black rock depth vibes, but the platforms and bridges were large enough that there was no real danger of falling off into the magma. After fighting off some more baddies at the Awakening Machine, it was already time to move on to the next zone. I found that the main campaign in the War Within was actually quite fast, which was nice as I really wanted to see each new zone. The entrance to Hallowfall is quite spectacular. I wanted to offer Anduin a ride, but apparently he had a griffin in his pocket and flew off, leaving me to run down the road myself. 
I reached a platform, and after observing all my fellow adventurers soar off into the distance, threw myself off the edge and flapped my way down to the next questing area. After fighting even more Nerubians, I glanced down this big hole, which had me excited for things to come, but that was for later, so I ran back up the hill to hand in the quests. I was impressed by the zone, it is very cool. Hollowful has many levels and extremely tall cliffs, and a giant rift going from the middle of the zone, which is the kind of things I like to see in zones. Getting on top of this docked airship took a bit of thinking and running around, but I eventually managed to find my way up. At one point, I tried to walk into another airship that wasn't actually solid, but luckily I managed to react in time and click it before I fell all the way down. Hmm, yes, fish people. Hmm, yes, fish. I'll do this later. What the hell is this thing and why is it following me? Being flightless so far hadn't been too much of a hindrance, but eventually I'm asked to meet the questing NPCs across this huge gap. I could take the flight path, or I could do things the fun way and go and glide across. Ooh, a big hole. I should jump down it later. Merildar is a cool little city and only slightly annoying to get around by foot. This challenge given to me by children took me way too long. I know I could have done the other ones instead, but 2024 is the year of me finishing what I started, no matter how long it takes, and this includes incredibly annoying parkour. I'm kidding, this is the kind of stuff I live for. After some more quests that were easy to do on the ground, it was time to take the fight to the Nerubians. Flightmaster be like, this is fine. I love when Blizz forgets to unshape chip me for important tasks that require hands. With the main Holofall questline done, I moved on to Ashkahet. First two quests were pretty straightforward, just save some dudes and kill some spiders. Following the road, I found a creepy pit where I quested for a bit, but it is a cave, so nothing to note here. After that, I followed the road some more. There are a lot of cliffs and slopes in the zone, but so far no real hurdles. I got my first look at the city of Ashkahet. I was curious at how it would compare to Suramar. I then met this tiny little spider who I absolutely trusted completely and let lead me into a Nerubian den. Luckily for me, these ones were friendly, although I do wonder what would happen if the forces of evil ever realized how gullible us adventurers are. I continued following the road where I killed even more spiders and gathered intelligence. It was 8am at this point and had been playing all night, so I wasn't thinking when I accepted a group invite from a death knight. Since I didn't want to be that one person letting the other guy do all the work, I did fly to keep up, but checked afterwards and found that I could have done the quest completely flightless, so I'm just going to pretend that's what I did. Thanks to the pheromones given to me by the big spattery beetle boy here, I didn't have to worry about dodging a billion aggressive mobs. Ooh, free NPC ride giving me a lift to the city? Don't mind if I do! After obtaining even more pheromones, it was time to explore the city. Unlike Suramar, Ashkahet is much more open, which means the guards are much easier to see and dodge. Although what I didn't see coming was that by talking to this guy too much, I would get a one-way trip out of the city with bonus achievement. It took me several minutes to get up to where I was before, but it was doable. After some more adventures around the city, which I'm not going to show you because spoilers, I headed back to Dornigal and officially completed the main leveling campaign quest. Now for the Sojourner quests. Also, for some reason I got mailed a bunch of awakened flight stones, not sure what that was about. Main quest lines are always fairly straightforward, being your guide from one questing hub to another. It was the side quest that I expected to be the bulk of the challenge. I started out doing quests around Dornigal. It became clear to me very quickly that some of these quests were made with the assumption that you would fly, as I had to continuously run back and forth between the main parts of the city and the Council Warden's Rise, which while possible thanks to a tunnel system, took several minutes each trip. Oh, what's this? I'll, I'll just leave you guys to it. At least the way down is easy. After a lot of running around for various chain fetch quests, it was time for the side quests outside of the city. As I said earlier, the Isle of Dorn is fairly flat, so most of the quests weren't much of a challenge. I'd say the only quest that gave me pause was the one of the cloud rooks around three shields. There wasn't an obvious way to the top of the island, so I had to parkour it using a tight angle between a rock and the cliffside. But I don't even think this quest was part of Sojourner, so I likely could have just come back later with flying. Also, shout out to Blizzard here for trying to steal my account information. These guys have been super aggressive ever since the expansion started. I'm honestly surprised Blizz hasn't banned every combination of the name for the letters B, L, I, Z, A, R, and D yet. 
But with the final Isle of Dorne Sojourner questline done, I took to the skies and celebrated by collecting all of the glyphs in the zone. I started out the ring depth Sojourner by listening to some kobold tales, which dinged me to 80. Hooray! Doing all the side quests at my absolute weakest as a fresh level 80 with no gear, what could possibly go wrong? At least since the next three zones were all underground, I didn't have to worry about losing my sunwarm sand buff. I helped around Gundergas some more until I was given a quest to patch up some pipes. I, uh, I hope this quest isn't part of Sojourner. I decided to leave that for later and continued on with the other quests in the area, into the north in the earthenworks and Nibblegaz mine. No real issue of any of those quests since they were all on the ground or underground. Well, even more underground. While doing one quest, honoring some inert earthen and killing moles, I noticed the object I needed for another quest high up on a ledge. Looking up, I thought I might actually be able to get up there, so I began to climb, using Feral Charge for the extra boost. Once I got up, I realized that I was actually very close to where those leaky pipes were, and even though I had planned to do the quest later on the off chance I wasn't part of the Sojourner meta, I quickly found myself attempting it. I fixed the first pipe and tried relogging to see if it would respawn, but that didn't work, so I knew I'd have to actually climb my way up to get all 12. I actually managed to get 9 out of 12 just by parkouring. The other 3 I got because I decided to use flight as a sort of checkpoint system and accidentally got too close to the steam pipes, but I'm pretty sure at least 2 of those I could have reached without flying and the last one I could have likely gone if I used a rocket helm toy for the added height. After finishing up the other quests in the area, I started to head south and came across a lever. Upon fixing it, it turned into an elevator to the Isle of Dorne, very handy. As mentioned earlier, the Ring Depths as a whole has a large network of roads and railways that make getting from one questing hub to another very easy, and actually the zone as a whole is just very easy to get around, as despite the amount of stalagmites and columns scattered around, there are still plenty of wide open areas. At one point, I was tasked with burning Deep's flare nests and was worried that they'd be super high up in the cave walls, but it turned out they were low to the ground and easily reached. The only other quests of note were this one involving fog beasts, where I had to follow a trail along the ground leading me to a cave that I had to golden glide to, and this other quest with the goblins where I thought they'd give me a lift, but actually they just threw me extremely far. A few quests later and the Sojourner of the Ring Depths was done. In celebration, like the Isle of Dorne before it, I flew around and collected all the glyphs in this zone too. Hello fall time. The Belladar shift is always impressive to watch. Instead of leaping and flapping my way down like the first time, I ran down the path finding a sad dude just sitting there. I do the world quest in the area and then run down to the hub where I pick up a quest sending me all the way back to where I just was. It turns out the quest is basically just the world quest I just did, meaning I could have probably done both at the same time. Whoops. After that quest, and a few more easy ones in the area, I moved on, grabbing a resonance crystal on the way. I came across a quest where I had to torch some eggs and kill some moths, but they were very high up on some tall plants and out of reach. I solved this issue by running up a nearby cliff and flapping my way over. Nothing too much of note for the next few quests, although this one quest line of the mage did send me all over the place. Dude even had the nerve to cast teleport instead of portal, forcing me to run all the way back across the zone. Unlike the other zones, Hellful is a bit harder to get around on foot, so I just ran to the nearest flight path and took that back. 
Anyways, after giving a certain somebody 15 angry star surges to the face, I moved on to the quests around Meraldor. A lot of them were pretty straightforward. Talk to person X, then person Y, then person Z. However, a few stuck out. I was sent down to the harrowing depths to retrieve some dead people things. Despite its depth, Blitz had the foresight to add a path back up the cliffside. Hmm, crystal. Flat, 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 flat. Oh wait, the things I need are at the top of the cliff. Whoops. I got a bit confused with Helm Helm's Dead, because I wasn't sure if these were full side quests or just max level weekly type things. I did all the quests in the area that I thought were important and then moved on. Getting to Valhan's claim was a bit of a quest in and of itself, but weirdly, once I handed in the quest, I didn't get a follow up, so instead I went and helped out that peculiar fish I'd found earlier. After that, I found the actual breadcrumb quest for Valhan's claim, but before going back, I decided to see where this airship would take me, and I did a bit of an air tour. I wound up on the Priory of the Sacred Flame, so I did the quest in that area instead before flapping my way to the claim and finally completing that quest line. And in case you were wondering, yes, I had to run all the way back. I really miss Flight Path Whistles. I decided to do the Priory Follower Dungeon, and after clearing it, discovered that there was no window. I wanted to see how far I could get, but... I was very glad about Blizz's changes to res sickness right then. Since this was my first time back in Dornigal after unlocking flying in both the Isle of Dorn and Ringing Deeps, I decided to dive down the Corway for the first time. It's a pretty neat transition between zones. The only other quest I want to make a note of is this one quest where an orphan girl asked me to retrieve her teddy bear. When I grab it, I also find her nearby. Asking her how she got there, she tells me that she hitched a ride on my mount. What mount? I'm a druid. I flopped my way over. Where were you hiding? Up my ass? After that quest, I was basically done with Sojourner, except for this one other quest that was time-gated. And by time-gated, I mean they hotfixed it literally the next day to not count for the Sojourner quest lines. Hooray! Before moving on to Ajkahet, I decided to see what was down the giant hole. Turns out it was a delve entrance. Conveniently for me, there was a guy at the bottom willing to give me a lift out. I grabbed a bunch of quests from around the Weaver's Lair, and then started out with the side quest near Farron's Advance. It wasn't too difficult since I had two elite NPCs helping me along with stealth, and all the ballista that I needed to destroy are accessible by ground. They direct me back to Holofall afterwards, and I took the opportunity to explore the steep winding path between Ashkhet and Holofall. After that, I returned to Farron's Advance and helped out with the other NPCs before moving on to the Wormlands, which has a tremor mechanic where moving on the ground fills a bar which summons additional worms that fills up enough. I actually didn't even realize that this place was a no-fly area until later on, after I had unlocked flying and tried to fly through it. Moving on, I started doing quests around the ruptured lake area, but eventually got stuck with a quest where I had to get rid of some floating mines. Throwing myself at them didn't work. I needed the buff provided by the NPCs that I could only get by flying through them. I decided to return later in the hopes that the quest wasn't part of Sojourner. One quest in Wild Camp Orle sent me all the way back up to the top of the ruptured lake. It was quite the run to get up there. Eventually, I wound up traveling near the city where I came across these ellipses I somehow hadn't noticed until now. They were actually scattered around the edge of the city and the various hanging platforms in the surrounding area. They ended up being very useful to me. Upon reaching the Niffin town of Marl, I discovered the last bit of the map and unlocked the War Within Pathfinder, which, similar to Dragonflight, simply unlocks Steady Flight. There isn't too much of note left. As mentioned, the city is clearly inspired by Suramar, but the roads are much wider and the guards are much sparser, meaning it feels nowhere near as tense and comes across as a poor copy. Eventually, I was left with two quest lines. This one in Rakush, which was bugged and I couldn't complete, and the mine removal one. I tried flying through the light circle to at least get the buff before attempting to yeet myself into the mines from the ground, but as soon as I touched the ground, the buff faded away, so unfortunately this quest is a hard flying required quest. After this point, I considered the Sojourner achievement done, since I knew that the one bugged quest I was missing could easily be done from the ground anyways, once it did work, and after Blizz fixed it, I did wind up going back and completing it ground only. Like the other two zones, in celebration I gathered the rest of the glyphs in Halifal and Ashkahet, getting a new mount for all my troubles. 
So in summary, from what I could tell, the entirety of the main leveling campaign and all but one or two of the Sojourner quests are doable from the ground. I'd say that generally all the zones are pretty easy to traverse, with the exception of Hallfall, if you, for whatever reason, decide you don't want to use the Flight Master or airships. But with that done, I want to look at the zone design from the air and see what kind of things Blizz did to make air travel more interesting and potentially suggest ways to improve zones. I noticed a lot of comments in my last video lamenting the addition of flying and the loss of feeling of exploration, but I don't think flying is necessarily mutually exclusive with the feeling of exploration or with the concept of traversal as a skill. I actually like dynamic flying because it often requires some level of skill and practice to pull off certain maneuvers. For example, if I want to fly slowly over an area so I can scout it, I need to be able to properly control my speed, which often means adjusting my pitch up and down a lot to increase or decrease my momentum when needed. Sure, I could land and spend 5 seconds switching the steady flight, but if I then wanted to take off somewhere else, I would have to land again spend another 5 seconds switching back. I just find having to deal with pitch control to be much more interesting. I believe if a zone is properly designed around flying, that it can have a very similar feeling of exploration to pass zones with no flight, but did the War of Inn pull it off? So after leveling my main to 80 with no flight, I went back and explored each zone with it. I also leveled several alts with the use of flight to see how it played out. Keep in mind that the following review is entirely based on navigability and engagement with the environment and not visuals or atmosphere, which I think Blizz did an amazing job at. If you want a more in-depth view of how I see zone design, please watch my last video. First up, Isle of Dorn. It's... it's... hmm. Okay, I'm just gonna say it, it's boring. Like, I enjoy the zone well enough visually, but when it comes to navigation, it's just flat. So, so flat. There are mountains, not very impressive ones, that you can't climb. Some deep valleys between the mounds, eh. The city of Dornigal is very open air and spacious. Almost too spacious? I certainly felt it when running around on the ground. It also doesn't have a lot of verticality to it. I don't know, I just feel like Veldraken was much more fun to fly around. There's no arches or fountains in central areas for me to loop-de-loop -loop or circle when I'm bored. I guess there's this big chain, but it's just not the same. It also feels like really stretched out, like the streets are much wider than they need to be. The increased speed allowed with flying definitely let Blizz create much larger zones than in the past, but in a city environment, it just means the city feels empty, although that may be on purpose due to plot reasons I won't go into here. The one feature of Dornigal I do really like is the entrance to the Ringing Depths, the Coreway. I think it's really cool diving straight down and then following a long twisting staircase further and further into the depths of the earth. They even added this slipstream to help you ascend if you're going the other way. Normally I'd say that slipstreams make ascending too easy and that there should be at least some reason to develop skill-based flying and fly up yourself, but this is a zone battery and not meant to be some sort of challenge, like reaching the top of the giant mountain in Thaldrassus, so I'm fine with it. The Ring Dips When I first heard that the War of Finn was going to have underground zones, I was very intrigued, because I actually think caves and underground areas in general are a very underutilized part of the game. However, while I had my idealized version of an underground zone in my head, I expected something else from Bliss and I ended up being right. It's very open for a cave, and very horizontal. There is a slight slant to the zone that slowly leads deeper, but it's at a shallow enough angle where you don't really feel it. There are a lot of huge stalactites and stalagmites in columns, but they're so spread out that they're never in your way. I had been hoping for at least one subzone of tight spaces to fly through, but that's nowhere to be seen. Well, aside from these huge holes in the ceiling, which I can't fly to because of invisible walls. Lame, Blizzard. Lame. Some portions of the zone have these huge stone beams high up near the ceiling, which are nice to sit on if you want to observe something below, but otherwise don't seem to have anything of interest on them other than deep flares and the occasional herb and ore node. I did find one hidey hole though behind a glyph, but I wish there were more. Hello, Fall. Okay, now for a zone that I actually think is well designed for flying. Finally, some verticality! So as I mentioned earlier, there's this big rip going through the middle of the zone that leads to this big hole, which you can dive down in, and I think that's super cool. There's also a lot of tall cliffs and overhangs and arches, which I can fly around, under, and through, which I believe are important components to a fun flying zone. And most importantly, there are reasons to both ascend and descend in the zone. The bottom of the big hole has a delve in it, and at the highest peak in Hollowfall is a priory, which in and of itself doesn't have much use outside of questing because the dungeon entrance is in Meraldor for some reason, but it's still quite the landmark. That being said, Blizz, 
Why would you line up three hoops like this and not let me fly through them? For some reason I can fly through the top hoop and even the metal fencing around the rooftop, but not the other two hoops. I am most disappointed in this regard. The other two things that disappoint me in Hollowfall is the fact that I cannot reach the ceiling due to an invisible wall. Lame. Which also stops me from perching on the high cliffs. And also, I cannot fly the Belladar, the big glowy crystal thing, also because of invisible walls. Although, from what I've read online, it's supposed to blind you with a flash and teleport you back to shore, but I've never gotten this to trigger for myself. In the case you were wondering, Belladar is an actual 3D object, and not a 2D PNG floating in the sky. And also, unfortunately, you cannot use Inky Black potions in Hollowfall. It even purges the buff from you if you use the potion outside the zone and fly in. Ajkahet. Um, similar issues to the Ringing Depths. Very horizontal zone, very open, nothing interesting on the ceiling, aside from these glowy webs that will web you and teleport you to the ground if you fly too close to them. Better than invisible walls, but not by much. Although maybe horizontal is a bit too harsh of a description, because there are actually some ravines and valleys cutting their way through the landscape near the city. So it's kind of an in-between between the Ringing Depths and Hollowfall. The designs of the Nerubian buildings are neat. I like how a lot of them hang from the ceiling. But they, and the city itself, also runs to the problem of being very horizontal. There are some levels, so it's not completely flat, but like, these are spider people. They can climb up walls and cling to ceilings. You'd think that their city would be more layered since they themselves can easily traverse a 3D space, even if most of them can't fly. If I were a Nerubian city planner, the space from the cavern floor to the cavern ceiling would have been filled with a sprawling network of buildings and web paths. All this open air just feels like wasted space. Come on guys, it's free real estate. Despite my criticisms of the zone, there are three areas that I do like a lot. The Ruptured Lake, Arathai's End, and the Trickling Abyss. The three entrances to the zone, because these three areas actually have some verticality to them. So all in all, aside from Hollowfall, I am kind of disappointed with the War Within zones in terms of navigational interaction. Comparing to the Dragonflight zones, I feel like they're a step back. Three out of the four zones are underground zones, but they run into the same problems I had with Zerlet Cavern, where they ended up just feeling like boring overworld zones with a ceiling. I just think that if you're going to allow flying in the zone, you should make sure that there is a point to flying. There's a whole third dimension to work with, but it's very underutilized. I'd like to see zones with multiple layers stacked on top of each other, or points of interest halfway up walls that aren't gathering nodes or dragon racing NPCs. Blizz did bring back the sparkly orbs you can fly through for currency, which I like, one thing that didn't seem to make it through from Dragonflight were the Explorer Flags that challenged you to land on tight mountain peaks. I thought those were a fun challenge in Dragonflight, and I'm sad we didn't get any in the War Within. And the ceilings! The ceilings! Alun, damn it, Blizzard, you can't just make these fun-looking tunnels in the ringing deeps and slap an invisible wall over them. Put something cool up there. Let us explore. Let me in. Let me in. And, and, and that's it. That's the video. Much shorter than my last video, but I do have plenty of alts I still need to finish leveling. I think the War Within is a cool expansion. If you haven't already checked it out, you should. And I do think the zones look very cool, but whoever makes the layouts really needs to up their 3D game. Thanks for watching. No idea what I'm going to work on next. Goodbye.